From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our Monday forecast, plus a woman in Billings found dead inside her home in the Heights. A homicide investigation now underway, but first, our top story. Several Montana and Wyoming counties remain on high alert as wildfires continue to burn hundreds of thousands of acres of land. Officials say weather conditions are improving out there and fire crews are making good progress on those fires. We'll start with the Remington fire, which began in Wyoming, but quickly spread to Montana, impacting Bighorn, Rosebud, and Powder River counties. That fire now sits right around 190,000 acres and is still 0% contained. However, the evacuation warning at the Tongue River State Park is now lifted, and the Rosebud County Sheriff's Office says firefighters are effectively managing the blaze. Evacuation notices remain in effect in Decker and Ashland. The heat was so enormous that it blistered my knees and my right hand has blisters on it and, and my ear. And to me, it was a close to death experience. I've been fighting fires for over 60 years and <laughs> here, and this is way the worst of I, that I've ever seen. As the fire continues to move towards Ashland, many community members have come together to offer help. In Lame Deer, a shelter has been established at the Boys and Girls Club. The House Draw Fire southeast of Gillette, Wyoming, that sparked by lightning, is now 88% contained. It has burned nearly 180,000 acres so far. The fire shut down Interstate 90 between Buffalo and Gillette last week, but now is reopened. All evacuation orders are now lifted. In all, nearly 700 firefighters are fighting the two fires, along with the Constitution and Flat Rock fires. MTN's Charlie Klebs has a first-hand account of what it's like on the front lines of these massive wildfires. Take a look. With the Remington fire raging on this weekend, the loss continues to pile up. It's heartbreaking to know that they're losing their livelihood. Livestock and land continue to burn from the fire, which began in Wyoming and is now leaving its imprint in Montana. There's quite a few animals that were, you know, burned in this fire. The sights and sounds daunting, keeping rural volunteer fire departments like the one in Broadus extra busy. We pretty much were out there for two full days and night. Long shifts that this small crew of just 15 has gotten used to this summer. They say they've helped with 50 different incidents just this year. We cover our whole county, even though we have some fire districts that help out. Sometimes traveling great distances to help out. They say they've been on the front line fighting the flames of the Remington fire since it jumped the Wyoming Montana state line. There's line around the whole thing and most of it has been burned blackout to the line. That blackout means progress in containing the fire. However, they know there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. It won't be controlled for uh, probably even a couple weeks. A small group committed to helping however they can in a desperate time of need. We're fortunate in that our community supplies us with the best equipment we, we, you know out there, so we can do a lot more with a lot less people. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Welcome to Monday, the final week of August. A lot of stuff going on today in some spots of the state. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But first, what's going on across the U.S. today? Midwest, a couple of intense days of heat and humidity expected. Northern Plains, upper Midwest, severe storms and isolated flash flooding. That will affect parts of Montana and to uh, Wyoming. We'll show you that coming up. And the Southern Rockies and the High Plains, daily monsoonal thunderstorms shifting eastward. So the big story for some today, especially eastern side of Montana, we're tracking this deep area of low pressure that's got a lot of monsoonal moisture attached to it. Some areas could get a good soaking. Some areas could even have some flash flooding and severe storms attached to this. We'll take a look at that with the main forecast coming up. The latest on the discovery of a body in Billings now being investigated as a homicide. Officers found the body of a 52 year old woman in an apartment in the Heights after she wasn't seen for days and neighbors were concerned about her safety. MTN's Alina Howder speaks with those neighbors while a man sits in jail on suspicion of her death. 
There's still many unanswered questions surrounding Saturday's homicide of a 52 year old woman here at this apartment complex in the Billings Heights. But neighbors say that she was a wonderful person who will be dearly missed. I don't know what's going on. The answer to Catherine Love's question was one she never expected. She didn't deserve this. Catherine believes she was the last person to see her 52 year old neighbor before her body was found Saturday. She was the sweetest woman, just the friendliest soul, always had a smile, always laughing. Catherine and the woman's other next door neighbors, Brandon and Olivia McLean, hadn't seen any signs of her for a couple of weeks. Hadn't seen her, hadn't seen her, hadn't seen her. And then all of a sudden, all all the windows are wide open, the sliding glass doors are open. My wife, she had come out earlier <clears throat> to throw something away in the garbage can and she said she smelt something funny. As an army veteran, his gut feeling prompted him to call for a welfare check before heading out to dinner. And I had gotten a call from, on my wife's phone from our neighbor, uh, Kathy, and I could hear the sergeant and he was like, yeah, we need him here now. He delivered Brandon, Olivia, and Catherine with crushing news. Shock, anger, um, disbelief. Police have since arrested 45 year old Shane Roberts in connection to the homicide who residents in the area say became her live in boyfriend after starting out as her caretaker. Olivia says her neighbor loved to garden and collect rocks and was always thinking of others. She was friendly with all of us for crying out loud. She found a Barbie house and brought it over for our daughter. A devastating loss for this tight knit community. She was my friend actually. Um, she was very, very sweet. She didn't deserve that. She was, she was an angel to us. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. All 14 Walmart pharmacies in Montana are now able to test for the flu, strep, and COVID-19 and prescribe the appropriate treatment all in one visit. With cold and flu season upon us, it's a valuable service to many who are pressed for time. 55 of 56 counties in Montana are designated as having a shortage of professional medical providers. We have two really close walk-in clinics that just get overwhelmed, especially during cold and flu season. So it's gonna take a lot of pressure off them also. And prices range from 150 to $175. Laurel, Montana was host to a long line of Corvettes weaving through town this Saturday. Laurel Chevrolet hosted part of the world's largest moving automobile events, the National Corvette Caravan. Some 20 caravans from all over the US are headed to the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky. That city is home to the only Corvette assembly plant in the world. It is an event that happens every five years, with this year marking the museum's 30th anniversary. The caravan that stopped in Laurel came from Oregon and Washington and made a stop in Butte on the way to Laurel. The caravan also has the Beartooth Highway and Cody, Wyoming on its travel itinerary. We started out with 250 Corvettes and we're being joined tomorrow night by an additional 100 from Central California that are coming up and joining with us and an additional 25 that are coming down from Western Canada. We'll be tomorrow night at dinner about 355 or so Corvettes. By next Wednesday, 3,500 Corvettes will be in Bowling Green, Kentucky.